Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to use the gavel because it's here. All right. How about that? <laughs> so um, I am calling to order the Pasco Consolidated Justice Information Board, and um, we will stand for the invocation and pledge, please. Oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could you please take the roll? The Honorable Nikki Alvarez Dolls. Present. The Honorable Sarah Malo, represented by Mr. Craig Wisenhunt. Present. Mr. Jim Weaver. Present. Ms. Vicki Maurer. Present. Ms. Melissa Fuller. Present. I'm Chris Dudley, Department of Corrections, Circuit Administrator. Okay, Chris Dudley. Chief Kim Bogart. <coughs> Mr. Jeffrey Steinsmeyer. Here. Thank you, and I just want to make a comment that we have a quorum present. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, do we have anyone um, on public comment? Mr. DeJohn. All right, and anyone, there's no one in person for public comment. So we'll move on to the next item, which is the approval of two uh, minutes, one for September 11th, 2020, and then our last meeting of December 11th, 2020. Has anyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Uh, I'll make the motion to. Okay. So we. All right. Captain Seltzer um, made the motion and Mr. Stein Snyder seconded. Is that correct? Okay. Just make sure. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. So the next item on the agenda is to review and approve bylaws. Okay, so let me grab it real quick. So I wanted to put on record the approval of the bylaws because these bylaws were amended in prior years, but they weren't formally um, adopted and the changes were not formally adopted as part of the record. So when we were looking at the bylaws um, and the edits to them that we made, then um, we wouldn't have a formal bylaws that were in of record that we could um, easily locate. So I want to just quickly go through the history on how we changed the bylaws. And then um, that was on record. So I pulled prior minutes to identify what changes the board made and then um, presented those, um, those changes in the bylaws for our board to formally approve. And um, so we can have it in the official record for our meeting. So um, on April 8th, 2011, uh, the board changed the name from the Pasco County Criminal Justice User Policy Board to the Pasco Consolidated Justice Information Board. Then on February 13th, 2015, um, the addition of a representative of the Board of County Commissioners as a member and the replacement of a representative from the Health and Rehabilitated Services um, with one representative from the Department of Children and Families was determined. And then in May 1st, 2015, the replacement of a representative of the courts uh, with the chief judge of the Sixth Judicial Circuit or designee and the addition of one representative of the Department of Juvenile Justice as a member. And then on June 23rd, 2016, we voted to increase the quorum of our board from three to five. So those edits have been incorporated into these bylaws that are before the board. You've had an opportunity to review them. Um, so if 
we could take um, a motion on it. It would be great. I'll go ahead and make the motion. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Captain Seltzer motioned and Mr. Stein Snyder has seconded. Is there any discussion? We could make the clerk the chair for life. No, that is not part of this. <laughs> We're just approving the prior revisions. <laughs> <laughs> no new additions. Huh? All right, so I'm not going to accept that conversation <laughs> if I had the power. <laughs> all right, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. thank you. Um, any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Now, um, what I would like to say about the bylaws um, when um, I was reviewing it and I was reviewing it with my team and uh, Ms. Thompson is here and she when she reports out later today for our office, um, what we wanted to bring to the board's attention is the purpose of the Consolidated Justice Information Board and some of the information contained within the bylaws is um, not up to today's um, rules of procedure. So if we would like to look at in the future um, what the purpose of this board should be. Um, I don't think it complies because when it was created, it was created back in the 1970s for the purpose of us um, going from a paper-based system to a technical uh, solution system. So when you read the purpose, um, the purpose has been accomplished, right? <laughs> so what do we want this board to be? Um, is I think our next step in that and then also bringing up the words to today's rules because it has changed since the 1970s, right? Absolutely. So we'll, 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 we'll talk about that and Kim will give us um, some additional information on that later. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next item, item six, interfaces, reports, and upgrades. So we have the clerk and controllers report with Tim Jamison, director of IT. Is he on, John? Thank you. Tim, you'll be made a panelist. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we have uh, accomplished a few of the uh, follow-on tasks from our last clericus upgrade. Uh, as you recall, one of the uh, one of the things that we had in the uh, prior upgrade was the ability to. Um, using the newer style credit card processing systems, which is the chip-based systems. And so that was in the last release and we're, we'll be installing the those credit card machines throughout the clerk's office um, this coming week. So we had some, some information on that. We did get some uh, an update as well for the communication services. And initially it seemed like that resolution had uh, that that had given us some resolution, at least uh, some significant improvement. I think Pat has some recent updates on that, that that maybe the problem is cropping up again. So we'll need to look at that. Also, we had the uh, the the last release had improvements in the uh, uh, UCR processing. It extended it to more case types, and um, so we're diligently working on those case types. We have one more major case area to go. That's the, the criminal uh, case type, which is of course the concern of this board. Uh, that's gonna be released in the next version of Clericus. And um, we have filed an extension with, with OSCA to let them know that uh, that version will not be in place in Clericus in time for us to complete all of their all of their testing requirements. So um, they've acknowledged our request for an extension and we're moving forward on that. Another um, another area that's gonna be in the next release of Clericus and that we're actively working on is the um, criminal justice data transparency. So that code uh, is being developed locally here in, in, in Pasco County. It's being shared with our sister county in, in Pinellas, their sister county in, our, in a pilot project. And so they're adapting it and um, working on it for uh, the uh, Tyler Odyssey uh, case system. And we're working it off the Clerica system. So we are passing the code up to our vendor after we develop it so that it can be incorporated and benefit you know, other uh, uh, counties throughout the state. We have uh, approximately 
Uh, 47 counties have committed to using this tool, which we call TIDE for transparency initiative data extraction. Uh, and those tool, those counties include some, <clears throat> some fairly large counties such as uh, Miami-Dade and uh, Broward uh, committed to using that tool as well. Then we have, um, because of that, we released a new version of that tool where we made it multi-threaded. So, uh, so for transmitting PASCO's data now takes uh, only eight minutes instead of two hours to transmit a month's worth of, of data changes to FDLE for this transparency initiative. Um, so at this point, we have done literally all the testing we can do with the current version of the FDLE product they have available. There are outstanding issues. There are about a dozen identified issues that are still outstanding. We are expecting another release uh, from FDLE, um, their receiving side of the product that will be uh, available late next week and then we'll resume testing with them again. Um, I can give you a couple of, of, of examples of the types of issues that are still pending. Uh, for instance, uh, we're not really able to report any kind of case where the prosecutor action has not been filed. So. You know, there needs to be something filed on a case, a, a, a no information, a null clause, an administrative dismissal. Something has to be filed. If there's nothing that's been filed, we're not able to report that. Uh, another instance where we're not unable to report something is if, is if a criminal traffic case is reduced to an infraction. That needs to be reported, but there's conflicts between the directions we've received from FDLE and how to report it. And the actual way that their vendors program functions. So we're resolving, we've got about 12 issues that have been identified as key issues. One's been resolved. We hope a good number of them will be resolved in this next um, release cycle. If they are, we may be able to, to move to basically production reporting with FDLE. If there are not enough of those issues are resolved, um, and the error rate is still too high because of these, these misalignments of the code and, and instructions, then we're probably going to look at another five to seven weeks before we get the next release available uh, from FDLE to test against. And I think that pretty much the information I was planning to share. Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions of Tim? Anyone Tim, online? Tim, this is Jim Weaver. I was just trying to keep up. That was a lot of good information there. Um, with the extension filed, what, what was that all about again? Uh, the, the extension is on the UCR version 1.4 for criminal cases. That's the version that included the specifications for criminal. So because Clericus will not be delivering, their, originally their, their delivery date for that was planned to be in February. Um, Obviously, that's come and gone, and we have not received that that upgrade yet. So we filed an extension uh, as directed uh, with OSCA to let them know that we probably will not complete all of the all of the testing. We'll be underway in testing uh, whenever that release comes from Clericus, which is probably going to be midsummer now. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other questions for Mr. Jameson? Right, hearing none, I um I actually have some Tim. The um the next version of Clericus, do we have an ETA on when the next version is going to be ready? The the last uh, update we received was that it would not be released until uh, sometime in June. Okay. And since we've gone a couple more months since that conversation and have not had a reconfirmation of that date, I would not be surprised if it doesn't slip to July or August. Okay, thank you. And then um, the, I, I, I do wanna say the TIDE tool that Tim mentioned with the criminal justice data transparency, um, I just want to give kudos uh, to um, Tim and his team because um, they created the tool to be utilized throughout the state and 47 clerk's offices are utilizing it 
and I believe um, the Pinellas County State Attorney and Public Defender, Tim Kerfin of Wrong, are also going to utilize the TIDE tool, which um, was developed right here by our IT. So I'm just so proud of them. They created a statewide solution to help with the data transparency um, laws that um, came into place and just super proud of them, all the hard work they've done to work with FDLE. And uh, we were on a call yesterday with FDLE and they reported out that there are three um, clerk's offices that are reporting to them right now. Um, one is Pinellas and the other is Pasco. We are the pilot for this initiative. And um, the third is Hillsborough County. So they went and they developed their own um, their own tool. But um, very proud of our team for that. Uh, thank you to Tim and his team for all of their hard work. I, I do have a question, Tim. The FDLE public facing side, just to confirm, that is not up yet. Is that correct? It is not up with our data. What they've done is they have put they have put a site up, um, but they've loaded it basically with uh, with data from their OBTS trans transmissions. So it, it's still data that's coming from clerk's offices, and it's still data that's been vetted through their their systems before. But it's not as complete as the um, as the um, transparency legislation you know, demands, that demands more fields. So they're, for now, they're using the OBTS data. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. All right. Um, our next uh, person to speak is Pat Bros, Business Systems Analyst 2 with the um, County Information Technology in regards to interfaces, reports, and upgrades. Good morning, all. Thank you. Um, Good morning. I, as Tim had mentioned, there had been some issues with the communication. We, when we, we had a hot fix that we thought was fixing the issue, um, several weeks without having any issues. Um, but in the, it was brought to my attention in the past couple of weeks that we've had more um, issues on both sides. Uh, the state attorney, public defender, and um, the clerk's side. So. Um, that has been brought up to clericus them to um, reopen the ticket so that we can get some type of resolution on that. So that's back with clericus to um, figure out what is going going on with the, um, the with Civitech for them to figure out what's going on with the communications. Um, I do also have got a copy of Tide that is, our developers are working with that to do the reporting for the state attorney and the public defender. Um, that information, they're, they're working on um, implementing that now. So they're they're in the process of, so that we can report on our stuff. So, and we did use the same thing, the same type of application that the clerk has um, created. So we're implementing it in for the state attorney and public defender. Um, no other news of uh, being being updated. Um, everything else is, you know, no new new updates. As Tim has you know, already said, there, there is no new upgrades to the um, the actual um, attorney application. So that's all I have. Any other questions? Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Bros? Anyone online? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rose. I do not have any questions either. Thank you. All right. So we'll go to item seven, the court update about JAWS. Mr. Weaver, Jim Weaver, with court te the court technology manager. Good morning. Um, the JAWS update. So the Silverlight project, which is a large project that the developers are working on um, between Pinellas and Pasco County, continue to work on that project. We did meet with the Hillsborough developer and did some Q&A there, um, got some good information from, from them and everything went well. They're communicating via email back and forth. Uh, so progress is being made. Um, it's a slow process. Um, so I do not have a completion date or anything like that yet, uh, but we are making slow progress, which is good. 
Um, the next project on the list would be the Lexis file and serve probate project. Currently, the developers are on hold by the courts and the clerk uh, review some procedures. Um, so once these procedures are, are worked out, then we'll need then we'll have an idea of which way um, the developers need to go with uh, updating JAWS accordingly. Um, and then my third item here is uh, one that's a little different, it has to do with co-defendants uh, issue with criminal cases. Um, these are case numbers. I guess these are cases that have all the same case number, but they have a different extension at the end of them, which gives JAWS an issue with calendaring. It calendars the very first case number, but then the other ones that have like a AX, BX, CX, DX, it doesn't calendar any of those because of the extension. So um, we're going to have some meetings about that in... I think it has mainly has to do with the statewide prosecutor on how they set those cases up. So more to come on that one, um, but that is my JAWS update. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Weaver? Anyone online with questions for Mr. Weaver? Um, I do have a question. Can you, um, I guess, explain the Silverlight project itself and the impact it has on JAWS? I, I missed that connection. The Silverlight, um, currently Silverlight is part of the JAWS application. Um, Silverlight is a Microsoft application that has is end of life uh, October of this year. So they will not be supporting it. Um, it ties us to the IE browser, which is no good because you want to move away from that browser and get to a more current browser. So we'll probably be moving to um, Chrome or something like that. Um, and also the, the biggest issue is that it's used for the judges to sign. So all the signing the judges do is all based on Silverlight. Thank you. You're quite welcome. All right, if there's no other questions, right? Okay, thank you, Mr. Weaver. We're gonna move on to our next um, agenda item, which is item number eight, e-filing update. Um, from the state attorney, we have Ms. Vicki Maurer, operations manager. Okay, Vicki, you should be good. Okay, <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, we were notified that our budget um, item was for the enhancements that we um, are looking to do. And we reached out to Ms. Michelle Scully at the beginning of February. She is putting, she's going to draft a statement of work for us to review, and then we'll go forward with that. So right now we're just in a holding pattern waiting for that. That sounds great. Um, any uh, questions for Ms. Mauer? No? Anyone online? Okay. Well, um, that's great news. I'm excited for you. I'm sure you guys are looking forward yeah. to that as well. Most definitely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Mauer. All right. So we will move on to our next agenda item, item number nine, the um, updates from all of the justice partner agencies. So Vicki, we're going to start with you uh, with the state attorney's office. Thank you. Sure. Um, we're really just get, gearing up for trials to start. Uh, we have, I believe, one next week. I could be wrong with that. We've got a bunch the following week, so we're just going to ease into it and, and hope everything goes as planned. Okay. Thank you. From the public defender, we have Craig the Wise. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, like Ms. Maurer, our office is gearing up for the return of jury trials. Mm -hmm. um, our hope is to have that run as smoothly as it can be. Our experience in Pinellas County uh, was met with a lot of unexpected things of jurors coming in, having tested positive, and all sorts of things. So. We're hopeful, but we expect it's, it's going to be a slow roll up to uh, back to full speed. We also have a couple of large projects that are underway that are probably going to have um, not necessarily an impact, but require some cooperation from the other agencies as we try to develop a paperless 
case management system for our office to use across both counties um, just for consistency's sake and to be better able to identify conflicts in our representation. Uh, and I'll be reaching out to the other agencies to talk about um, what our concerns are and how we hope to be able to work together to get those done. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. All right, Captain Seltzer from the Sheriff's Office. Um, nothing substantial to the update. Again, uh, from the judicial side of things, we are prepping for trials to start back up and, you know, at the courthouse. So um, that's really it. Next week is a slow week. Everybody's on vacation. So we kind of lucked out for the first week. So We did. We did. Very good. Thank you. And uh, court administration, Mr. Weaver? No real updates, just like everyone else getting ready for jury trials. It's nice to have some sort of normalcy back. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. So, Mr. Dudley from DOC. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we really have, we don't have anything substantial, but uh, just to let you know that we're continuing since they've been ongoing with changes of pleas. We continue to uh, uh, receive new people on supervision. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and basically, we've gone through this pandemic as business as usual. Okay. Um, so all of our people are being seen, all of our people are being drug tested, all of our people are, are having searches, et cetera. So uh, there was no breakdown uh, from pre-pandemic to pandemic, except a few uh, procedures that we, uh, we decided to, uh, uh, to adjust, but the same job was still being done all the way through. Excellent, excellent. Good to hear. Um, we just, you know, government gets the job done, right? That's right. So thank you. All right. So we do not have a representative from Newport Ritchie. Actually, he's on. Oh, we are? Chris Melliker. Oh, thank you. Chris, would you like to give an update um, from Newport Ritchie? Is, is Chris um, been promoted, John? Okay. Chris Malaker, if you um, we we have unmuted you, you should be able to speak. Um, but you can do it online. It takes the points off your license. Oh, there are yes. <laughs> okay. It's a satellite. On a call, we'll come back. How about that? Thank you for seeing that. I didn't see it earlier. All right, um, Melissa Fuller. I don't believe she is on. Nope. Okay. And Mr. Steinsnyder. The board has no updates. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, the clerk controller, Ms. Thompson. Should take this off, right? Good morning. <clears throat> I have just a couple of things to, to give you updates on. Um, I wanted to let the board know that we held um, another Operation Greenlight on March 3rd through the 6th here in Pasco. And um, during that event, we collected just over $73,000 and waived over $8,700 um, in collection fees for those drivers to become uh, eligible to have their license reinstated. And that was um, 287 licenses were made eligible to be reinstated here in Pasco County. Additional information is, is going to be available as the report is finalized. I wanted to give you the preliminary results for the event that was held here this month in Pasco. Any questions about that? No, just great work. Thank you. Awesome. You did a great job. I, I have a question. Was that compared to the years where we do not have a pandemic going on, did you see a, a marked decrease in participation or were we able to keep it more or less stable? Actually, um, I wouldn't say there was a decrease at all. I think um, it was a pretty positive event and we held one in October as well. Um, and I don't have that data with me right this minute, but um, those numbers uh, were similar. So uh, I do think that people have taken um, the opportunity to uh, leverage maybe some of the income they've received to get their license back in order. We've had some pretty positive outcomes for our individuals. We had uh, one woman who uh, hasn't driven in like four years and she was uh, really excited because she was a entrepreneur and she was able to get her license back and she was going to, she said she was going to use her tax money to buy a van so that she could uh, further expand her business. So it was this really positive um, experience for a number of those individuals here in Pasco. 
Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions about that? All right. Thank you. So the other thing I wanted to talk about um, are a few initiatives we have going on in the clerk's office uh, to further um, support the electronic workflow. Um, we have uh, begun working internally on the development of an in-court processing um, user interface, and that will be um, utilized in the courtroom to eliminate the paper that we generate to judgments for the court. Um, and so that's, we're looking to have by the end of the fiscal year, uh, fiscal year uh, CT and MM cases available for the in-court processing, and that will be a collaborative effort that we work with um, internally with the justice partners as well, the state attorney, public defender, courts, everyone uh, will be part of that uh, process and workflow. So we're hoping to get that off the ground uh, this fiscal year. Any questions about that? No, just so excited. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> a dream of mine. Yeah, um, another in <laughs> Oh, yes. You too, Miss Vicki? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it's going to be, I think it's going to be more efficient for all of us as, a, as an entity that works together to, to, in the uh, justice partner system. So uh, we are also going to be working this year with the sheriff's office to try and develop a workflow that allows us to transmit arresting documents to them electronically. Uh, that's an initiative we're working on as, um, as well this year. I wanted to give an update that we have successfully um, given the small claims mediators uh, access to clericus through the IS-15. We were working on that the last meeting and I gave that update, but everyone has the access they need. So we will be submitting a request to the court to discontinue printing of small claim case files, which is something we currently do. And we were doing that to give the paper copies to the mediators. But since we don't have to do that anymore, we're hoping that we can update that oh, to, limit, to eliminate the need for having those paper files created. Exciting stuff, right? Yay. Yay. All so positive. exciting. Thank you. So as Nikki mentioned earlier, we have been going through the bylaws for the CJ board and to look at the um, purpose of the board and to understand, um, you know, how we can improve or amend our bylaws if we need to. Some of the things that we identified is that, like Nikki mentioned earlier, the whole purpose of the board was to uh, bring us into an electronic world, and we have done that. We have accomplished that. And there's some language in here um, that I think needs to be updated, and I'll give you an example. Uh, it says, the user's board will be the sole deciding authority as to the approval or denial of all public requests concerning computerized output media from CGIS. And I think that needs to be up, uh, looked at and take into consideration the Supreme Court orders and the rules that apply to court records. Um, so I don't think that language is in here as like it should be. Or, um, and maybe we need to really look at the purpose of the board because it talks about the installation, operation, and maintenance of the system. So I think all of us need to kind of really look at that over the next couple of months. And while we're going back and looking at the timeline of the creation of the board, and all of the things that have happened, we did ident identify a situation where there were some minutes that had errors in them. So we have uh, reviewed the audit from 2008. There are two uh, sets of minutes that will be on the agenda as noted items next month um, because no, none of the board members that were there in 2008 are currently on the board. So we're going to amend those minutes and put them on as a noted item for the next agenda so that we can have the corrected minutes on the record. Do you know what the errors were? I do. As a matter of fact, I do. So some of them, in, um, so that we had March 17th, 2008, and July 7th of 2008 are the two meetings that are in question. The March 17th, um, there was a duplication on the agenda that um, uh, item number seven was duplicated on it. And then there's some you know, um, formatting errors that they took the opportunity to correct at that same time. The other one was from July 17th. Um, the minutes were a complete duplication of the March 17th me me uh, meeting. So they uh, did not capture the minutes properly when they published them. So we have listened to the audio recreated the minutes from the July 7, 
2008 meeting, and that's what will be put on it as a noted item. Right. Those were the two situations that were identified during this project of creating the timeline and, and reviewing the purpose of the board and that sort of thing. Any questions about that? Any questions? No. Anyone um, on the online? Any questions? No. Well, thank you for going back in time. <laughs> thank the team. The team has done a really good effort pulling, you know, film and everything to get the information we need to review this. Has Jessica been part of that team to do that? That was mostly Shannon. That okay. was pretty much Shannon's little special project that she had been working on. Well, we'll have to thank Shannon. Yes. Next time I see her. Okay. Thank you. I just, one thing I just think going forward, we need to really consider, right? the purpose of the board, right? What it originally was and where we're going and kind of if we continue with the board, what we want out of it, mm -hmm. you know, what we, what we want to accomplish. Um, because, you know, it seems like it's an information sharing board at this point, which is a good thing, but are, are there other aspects that we want to add to it? And if so, you know, how do we accomplish that? So I, I definitely think that needs to be explored just to make it useful for everyone. I agree. I think that's a great comment. Um, you know, exactly, exactly what you said. I'm. I totally agree with. Any other, any other comments before we uh, thank Miss Kim for your. Thank update. you very thank much. You. All right. Is there any other business to come before the board? Anyone online? Okay, fantastic. Isn't this the best board meeting ever? We always end early. <laughs> All right, well, um, thank you everyone for coming. The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.